Oh, hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to Archetype. My name's Josh Herman. Welcome to the stream today. In case you can't tell by the title, which is, I don't know where it is, depending on what you're watching on, uh, we're going to be making something new today. Uh, I have some music going right now, so let me know if the music is too loud or if you guys can't hear anything. We're going for a bit of a more punk view today. Uh, we'll be starting a new character with a little bit of a different vibe. So getting into a definite vibe for sure right now, which I'm actually happy about. Um, so yeah, like I said, my name is Josh Herman. If you don't know what, what Archetype is, if you're joining for the first time and you're like, what is this title? What is this stream? Let me show you a little bit about what we're doing really quick and I'll get you kind of up to speed with what we're doing and what the series is and what we'll be doing today. So I'm going to pop open my share screen first and I'm going to show you my art station. Let's turn that down just a little bit. Let me know if it's too loud. Um, so this is my art station. If you don't know what art station is, it's an online portfolio site, but this is uh, my portfolio. So I've worked in the industry for a, a bit, about a decade and a half. Good evening, Ash. I see uh, Powell from YouTube. Welcome to the stream. Hello, everybody. Welcome for joining or thank you for joining. Um, I worked on a bunch of stuff, a lot of Marvel stuff, Naughty Dog, uh, Star Citizen, some personal work up here, some fan art. Um, but the, the series that we're working on today is Archetype. So this is the, the first one that we worked on. Uh, there are 12 characters in the archetype wheel. This is created by Carl Jung. So we have so far done the caregiver, the artist, and the sage. So we're going to finish doing the rest of these 12 or nine more to go uh, through the rest of the year. So at the end of 2022, but the goal is for me to have 12 finished characters uh, using ZBrush, Photoshop, Unreal, all these different types of things. So we're going to jump into this in a minute as far as what's, which one we're going to do. But this is what we've done so far. So we've done the creator or the artist. We have done... The Caregiver, which is this one, which we did uh, about a month ago in February. And you can see all these here. Feel free to check these out if you want. You can also check these out uh, on my Instagram. You can check those out there. I just posted a new one as well. And this is the new one that we just wrapped up. So this is the Sage. The Sage, uh, as I had said on my stream or on the previous streams where I was doing this, uh, I really struggled on this piece, and it's not my favorite piece that I've ever done, but I got to try out some cool new stuff. Uh, and I guess... I decided at the end to cover up some of the, the the work that I wasn't able to do. I wanted to make it kind of feel older, which is what the sage was. So I threw some fancy filters on it to make it look more like a painting, uh, which, which was actually pretty successful. And I'll probably use that technique more in the future. Stuff that I learned on this project was how to make feathers, um, which is something I had never done before. Uh, and just kind of exploring some more different types of, of shots that are not so much uh, about, you know, close-ups of characters and kind of more environmental so that's kind of what i'm working on hi adrian thank you for the follow um now again today we're going to be working on a new character so this is trello if you don't know what trello is it's basically a virtual uh way to organize your thoughts with virtual sticky notes how old am i i'm 37 thank you for asking name without a name very anonymous of you um so we have done the creator and the artist we'll put these over here right we've done the caregiver and we recently just wrapped up the sage. I'm going to go ahead and grab actually an image for the sage and put it in here just to show you a little bit about how this uh, software works. It's browser based. It is free. You can get it. Uh, it's for anybody can have it for free. But I can come in here and I can grab one of my recent renders and just drag it on here. It's now uploading it to the file. And I can come in here and you can see it's uploading and I can make it my cover. And so what's nice about it is each one of these cards can have information, they can have detail, they can have text, they can have comments, you can collaborate with other people on this. It's a really easy uh, and fun tool to use. And you can also upload your artwork, and so I can see it full sc screen here. So we're going to move this over to the side, because that character is now completed. Now I'm going to come over to the left, we're going to look at the other characters here. These are the other nine options that we have. The spoiler alert, based on the title, is we're going to be doing the Magician today. So the Magician, scroll down here. We'll put them in our inspiration, sketches, and ideas column and get some ideas. Now, the magician is somebody who basically cares about uh, power. They care about making things happen. They care about understanding the fundamental laws of the universe, making dreams come true. Some of their greatest fears are unintended negative consequences. The strategy is to develop a vision and live by it. Their weakness is they become manipulative. Talent is finding win-win. They're also known as the visionary, the catalyst, the inventor, the charismatic leader, the shaman or shaman, healer, and the medicine man. And some other options for who these types of characters could be from pop culture are here. 
got a lot of questions about where about what my specs are. Uh, I'm using a 2080 with 64 gigs of RAM on an i9 processor. And how much do 3D artists earn on average? That's really hard to to say because it's going to depend on the region or the job or the experience. So I can't answer that one for you. But thank you for the questions. All right, let's continue. So we're going to be doing the magician today. Now, my idea for the magician, the magician is that this is basically going to be the god of death. Each, uh, as I've said in the previous things, again, is that this is actually going to be a pantheon. So all of these characters that we're working on, all, all of the three that I've already completed, um, are, are pantheon. This is the creator. This is the creation god. This is the caregiver and protector god. This is the um, sage. This is the, the god of knowledge. And the, the magician will be the god of death, the god of power. So we'll be doing that today. And I kind of wanted to make uh, sort of a, a set of prime deities. So in my world, there'll be a, a de or two sets of deities that are the, basically the creators of all the creators and the magician. And eventually I'll be doing the lover uh, will be the follow-up to that. So there will be sort of a yin and yang to that. And this will be one of the prime deities as the magician. And also being kind of the god of death, I wanted to get into a little bit of something that was more, um, not maybe not exactly the right words, the right definition but something that's a little bit more uh darker with that something that's maybe a bit more like a demon right or something like that uh, where the previous ones have been a bit more light-hearted or creepy or caregiving we're getting zbrush booted up here right right this one is more does isolated right this next one i want to be more creepy and kind of have it set itself apart on this i'm not digging this music but i'm gonna i'm gonna switch it over to something let's do cyberpunk instead or synth wave there we go we can get into that so as always let me know if you got any questions and we'll continue uh i'm not going to answer questions about how much people are on, are on average just because i can't i don't have the information for that so uh hard to say but um thank you i appreciate the engagement so let's get started. The way I'm going to start today is we're going to start getting some reference. As you can tell from the title, we're also going to do some sketching. And then we'll eventually get here into ZBrush uh, to start doing our block out. I'm just going to go ahead and set that up as well. Probably start from a sphere. Yeah, probably start from a sphere. So I'll just load a tool. Not going to start on the, this exact second, but at least it will be here when we're ready. delete those higher resolutions and let's get into our Photoshop so I'm gonna do some fast sketching here um, this is mostly just for ideation this is mostly just to you know spend a little bit of time thinking about what this could be uh, this is you know again the whole point of this stream for me is to to show the entirety of the process both the good and the bad so I will be honest with you if I don't like something or if there's something that isn't my favorite or something that isn't working um, you know that's totally okay, and I don't mind that. just want to be uh, open to everybody who's watching for the first time, you know, expecting to see the, potentially the most beautiful art demo you've ever seen or whatever. Uh, this might not be super successful, so but we'll give it a shot and, and see how it goes. All right. Get a pen. Get my pen set up. Get my tablet set up. Get my right brush. I'm going to bring the brush palette, palette over and we'll pick out a nice brush here. I like to use, uh, these are from One Pixel Brush, I believe. I got them a while ago. I like this uh, Call Drago brush, which kind of has a bit of texture to it. And I also like this other one that I got a while ago, which is called the Drawer, I think is what it's called. I think this is from, from uh, Dan Levisi. Just some sketching brushes here. Let's use this one. Great. And I am going to draw in symmetry. Oops. That way what we can do is we can basically just explore some shapes. Uh, I actually really wanted to um, do this in Procreate. I really like doing Procreate because I can get away from the computer. I can do it somewhere else. But I was having some trouble getting it all set up today. So um, we're going to just do it today 
uh, some initial ideation and some initial sketching here in Photoshop. Name without a name. What, at what year you're asking, or what age did I start doing 3D? Uh, probably around the age of uh, 20, 25, 24, 24. We'll just say 24 as a large number uh, and see how that goes. Somewhere around there. Uh, I didn't really know that, I, that art was a career. Um, I didn't really know that before I got into college or, you know, just kind of exploring that. This obviously has a lot of texture in this brush. I wish that I kill some of that. Um, I want this character to have a graphical shape and again, something that's a, kind of the god of death. I want it to have these kind of potentially like large looming arms or something. What brush am I using? I'm using a brush from One Pixel Brush. Uh, you can find it online. Them. There's a little too much pattern in that brush, so I might switch it. Or oh, the pattern itself is too small. Uh, just because it gets distracting. Does this one have the same kind of pattern? This is the Tyrion Lannister brush. You can probably honestly just search for the Game of Thrones brushes, and that will get you what you want. They're themed around Game of Thrones and The Wire. So we'll say like there's maybe some... Uh, again, these are not going to be... It's not intended to be a beautiful illustration. It's intended to almost be a Rorschach test. Get ideas out, explore ideas, uh, see where things could go. I want this to be a, a character, not necessarily a villainous character. I'm going to switch up my um, eraser as well. you don't know you can make your eraser the same with different types of brushes but I want them to have an edge to them whereas the previous characters have not they've been a bit more a bit more clean what are some of the biggest projects I've worked on uh, I worked on every Marvel Cinematic movie from Avengers 1 to Avengers Endgame which is probably about 15 projects so the biggest one would be Endgame I think These are not loving these horns. I kind of like the idea of there's this shape or this collar thing um, that would kind of go around it. This world that I'm kind of working in is sort of fantasy sci-fi, meaning that there's elements that are can, can have robotic elements. You know, I'm not expecting everything here to be sci-fi specific. You know, it's not set in a certain date or a certain time. Um, Trying to kind of combine multiple things. The other one, I had these sort of um, you know globes that were, or orbs that were floating around a character, and I think I'm going to use that type of mindset to kind of get into where this character could go. That it's okay for it to feel a bit fantasy, a bit a bit sci-fi in that way. I'm going to try to use some more aggressive shapes so let's maybe there's a way that this could like the arms could like really jut out it wasn't my favorite movie and I didn't work on it um, but the the celestial designs in Eternals I actually quite like those so I've kind of been taking probably some unintentional reference points from that. Uh, especially for the one that I did, uh, that was the caregiver. That one had a pretty good amount of reference taken from that. You knew that I worked with Marvel, but you didn't know that to the extent. Yeah, I worked there for about five years. Uh, and I worked on, I actually started working with Marvel when I worked at Legacy FX. Um... And that was pretty fun. Let's just scale this down. I 
I worked on, uh, actually also worked on The Amazing Spider-Man uh, 1, the one with the lizard. I worked on some earlier uh, concepts and stuff for the lizard. But that was ultimately done by a couple other people, and Ian Joyner, I think, was the one who did the finals on that. Uh, this is getting kind of generic. I don't know. I think we're going to start with just the arms in this section here. And we're probably going to make this a bit more organic than this is feeling. I want to get some sort of a graphic shape. Just again, kind of looking and searching for shapes. If there was like a horn or several horns or something like that. Uh, another piece of inspiration that I've kind of been liking quite a bit was um, the show Station Eleven. I don't know if anybody's watched Station Eleven, but the costumes in Station Eleven are really interesting. How they're basically using these, you know, real-world found objects and um, layering them in interesting ways. So one person has like a costume that's made out of old uh, football gloves, like that you would just wear, and they're like all layered across them that kind of look like um, scales or patterns or something. I thought that was a really interesting way to do that. I think we kind of have enough to get moving on. I do kind of want to figure out what the end goal will be, how this person will be presented. This is going to be more of a male figure. The Their counterpart in the, as being a prime uh, deity is going to be the lover, and that will be more of a, a feminine character. Uh, so this one I'm going to lean into masculine shapes a little bit more uh, than the other one, which will uh, lean into more some more traditionally feminine shapes. And that's okay. Maybe that doesn't need to be like connected. That was something I was thinking about was maybe it could be um, multiple pieces that are like connected together through some form of uh, you know some form of like Magic? I don't know what the right word would be. Uh, is his pose indicative of his role? I think it'll have to be. Um, I'll turn symmetry off. You know, I was thinking like pose-wise, you know, I could do something where you know, the the head, I'll do a, I'll draw smaller. It's easier for me to just draw smaller, like little stick figures. So we'll say like the head could potentially be something where there's these horns or something. I was really enjoying the idea of them kind of having this kind of thing around them. They'd have to be kind of looming over things. I don't really want to do like a walking pose or something like that. I thought about, you know, some form of like a, a element, an instrument that they could have. So again, these are oop, these are not intended to be the most beautiful sketches. This is intended to be mostly for myself, so I can explore what the character is, who the character is, what they do, why they do what they do, what their potential poses could be, um, what their initial starting points could be. This stuff is this is all stuff that you can do it with any program, right? This is pen and pencil. This is ink. This is marker. This is anything you want it to be. Uh, you know, drawing in symmetry is obviously going to make it a little easier to do certain things, but that I'm not really looking for that here. Um, you're, you know, Voxel Forge is saying maybe a floating being. Yeah, that's an interesting idea. I like the idea of something floating. I don't think I've done that yet in the series, so that's a good idea. Um, you know, something like the very traditional... Uh, another character that I was thinking about, you know, and part of the story of this would that be eventually, like, the prime deities just left. Right, so maybe like there's a, a character uh, which is kind of based off of like some of my favorite types of characters. Uh, Silver Surfer is one of these. Doctor Manhattan is one of these, where the it's a pretty stoic character, stoic pose, 
and it's almost like uh, my foreshadowing is garbage right now but they're kind of standing and like almost like floating they also did this in eternals uh with icarus like this is kind of like his standard flying pose in a way but if he's like floating above the ground um you know and he would be pretty large in comparison so like if we go back to these characters that we've already done like this is a relatively large character you know you can kind of see like in comparison how much the scale of it to a, a human so it's obviously bigger but it's not like massive bigger uh, this character is probably slightly larger than a human oh, i can't here this character is slightly larger than a human and then this one uh is much larger than a human so we're looking at you know things that are going to be uh, for example, this little uh, pixel right here is a human. So this is a character that's, you know, hundreds of feet tall. Uh, I would imagine that the magician character is probably going to be somebody who's uh, quite a bit larger. So maybe people are like EA big. So I actually want him to be smaller than the um, caregiver character. So this is probably about this big, but that means we could have, you know, like mountains and we could do some form of like a, maybe I could put in some little huts. There's some cool huts and stuff we could do from like a medieval village uh, in Unreal. This will be eventually rendered in Unreal. So, you know, we could put some huts and maybe some trees that are going to be like in this area. Oh, we're making, this is Bob Ross. We're doing it, everybody. We're, we're at Bob Ross level, um, putting in some trees, maybe uh, try to figure out a way to do like a, a little river. That could be interesting. That vibe is the magician is small. Some Chihuahua energy. <laughs> I like that idea. Um, I mean, I could see. Let's see. For some reason, my. So th this is actually interesting, right? Like when we're talking about how big these characters could be, I do want it to be larger than a human. The reason I'm uh, kind of entertaining this idea, I don't know why my my like manipulator in Photoshop just goes away sometimes. But if they're like this big, it's still like bigger than like a house. It would still kind of fit that. But the thing I'm also thinking about is is his his counterpart, the magician's counterpart, and the lover, which is the other prime. How big will they be? Like, will they be smaller? Will they be like significantly larger, right? You know, are they gonna be somebody who's gonna have, um, you know, how, how big will, will they be if they're standing like next to each other? Um, and so maybe there's an element like that where it's like, you know, something that's bigger than this. Whereas if I did like this version Maybe that's a little too, like, too much. You know what? Fuck it, Rob. You win. Let's do it small. Let's make him a little bit smaller. I like that idea. But that means they have to have, like, they need to, like, exude power. And, like... need to be a this is probably if there's a, a bad guy in this world this is probably who it is or at least one of them let's see seven feet yeah i think a little bigger than seven feet and i want to be at least the size of a house so if like a normal person were to, you know, a human were to walk through uh to see them they would be like oh this is still like somebody who's super important so this is probably what the scale of the lover will be this is the scale of the magician so let's get let's get into it i like this um mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. one of the artists that i was looking at who i really really respect and like a lot his work uh this is something that came across my instagram was martin uh verhoven he makes amazing work he makes such incredible stuff check him out if you've never seen his work before and we'll just put a link to his instagram in the chat um, okay all right come on instagram do what i ask you he's amazing check him out 
Uh, but this work that he did recently, I really like this. How there's this kind of this graphic thing. I didn't mean to steal the halo, but I guess maybe I'm doing that on accident. But this sort of robe, and maybe there's sort of like a demonic elements to that. His style is very consistent, but I like that uh, visual of that. So I'm going to play around with that a little bit more today. Do I know Ian Hubert? Yeah, Ian's also amazing. Um, I think we got a pretty decent starting point, this kind of aesthetic. It might have some more hard surfacey elements to it, um, but I want to be more aggressive. Whereas this one will have much more uh, rounder, softer, feminine, uh, and probably of all the characters of the twelve characters, I'll do probably the most like sexy shapes that we'll do. That one will be that one, but this one is going to be more its aggressive counterpart. So, and this is the size of people. I don't like this. What we did here, this can go away. But I feel good about this. All right, let's save. Make a new folder. I know you can't see that, so apologies. Actually, just renaming a folder because I had thought I was going to do it a, di a previous time, and I did not. And this will just be our magician sketches. Cool. All right, ZBrush time. Oh, I just made the streaming software full screen. Let's hide this. Let's get in here. All right, we have a sphere. A uh, quick question as I'm working for the chat. Uh, I always like to, to pull and see what you guys like more from a visual perspective. Would you guys prefer to see me so I can talk to you? Or do you want to see it like this? The previous one we'll call that A. This version we'll call B. Do you like camera A or do you like camera B more? A, camera B. And also let me know if the music is too loud or too quiet. Oh, we already got one for A. Ash says B. Somebody, not funny, Sohan from YouTube says A. We'll just switch it up then. But B is fine. You can still very clearly see me. Good to know. Thank you very much. could use a uh, base mesh for this. I've been thinking about it. I don't really want to, though. I don't want to because... Honestly, I just don't want to. Uh, I kind of want to sculpt something from scratch. And this is the way that I enjoy doing that the most. You don't hear any music... Okay, hang on. You should hear music. Let me just double check the settings. Yeah, you should. Hang on. I'm going to turn myself up a tad. I'm going to turn this music up a tad. You should hear it now. Let me know if I cranked it too loud. I have a feeling I'm like three seconds somebody's be like yep that was too loud yep see <laughs> I turned it down a little bit <laughs> I'll keep playing with it now it's okay. Now it's okay. Okay, good, good, good. I won't touch it. I forget that there's a delay on the stream sometimes. Let's go. All right, let's make a let's make a character. Um, so I started with this cube, whatever sphere. Uh, I'm gonna do this uh, technique that I like to use, where um, I think I saw Point Pusher use it, and I've seen a couple other people use it. Brian Winey likes to use it, uh, where you use several blocks of basically virtual clay and you work on them individually. I've also seen a lot of animation people start getting into this, where they basically you know, make their character in several chunks, and then they dynamesh it all together into one big thing at the end. Uh, and that's what we're going to do. So I'm just going to look for some general head shapes at the beginning. I 
think I need to define kind of what this character is from like a, how humanoid they are. I know that humans exist in the world because I've already implemented that. But I don't think that this character itself uses would be exactly a human. So let's keep going. Uh, what are my views on Blender? Great question. I I've, I don't know Blender. I'll just be frank about that and tell you I don't know Blender. Uh, but I do know that Blender is super popular and everybody I talk to who uses Blender says it's great. So um, super supportive of it. Uh, Blender guru, a lot of the students that I teach here at Noman uh, who are all you know incoming, fresh, new students, um, they all have used Blender or most of them have used Blender as like their main package. And I think it's awesome. You know, I think that having a free piece of software, uh, which will continue to be free as far as my understanding, uh, having that exist is just amazing for the ability to teach people about 3D. Like I didn't know about 3D until I was, you know, in my 20s. Uh, not because I didn't want to or didn't like it, but uh, I didn't know about it. And I think that Blender's making it really accessible for people to to get into 3D, to get into this field, to get into it, and it just makes it really accessible. And so I'm a big, big, big fan of it. Welcome to the stream. See a, a little influx of people join in the chat. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Hope you're all doing well today. We're making a borderline evil deity today, for probably for the next several weeks. This one will probably take four weeks. I'm hoping four weeks. So far, they've all taken five weeks, uh, but I, they, they can't because otherwise I'll run out of time at the end of the year. So hopefully this one doesn't take too long. This needs to be more graphic, I think. Thinking about what that silhouette would be. What this could be as a silhouette. Have you ever created characters for games? Uh, Ashray from YouTube is asking. Yes, I have. I've created characters for games. Uh, I worked at Naughty Dog on Uncharted 3, so I created some cinematic characters, some background characters, some grunt characters, kind of the whole gamut of those types of characters there. Uh, worked in multiplayer in that, as well as creating character options for customization, um, which is actually really fun. Um, let's mirror this over. Then I went and worked in film for a while. And for about five years, and then after that, I went. I'm trying to clear his geometry. I went. I worked at a game studio again, working at Cloud Imperium Games. There, I was uh, the character director, character art director, and character creative director, uh, where I basically oversaw the whole character art team for a video game for three years, and hired and built that team up. Um, so I didn't make as many games, characters for games there, but I oversaw the team that did. Love games, though. Big fan. Do you think Noman will eventually use Blender as part of their curriculum? Uh, that will depend on if the industry professionally gets more into Blender. Uh, you know, the whole methodology of, of Noman's curriculum is, does the industry need it? Meaning, is it, a, is it a piece of software or knowledge that you should know when you graduate? And right now, the answer isn't a yes. It's not a 100% yes. There's some studios that are getting into using Blender, but if you look at the big studios that are making animated films or, or games or live action, you know, uh, VFX, 99% of the time, or at least 90% of the time, they're using uh, Maya. So that's why we teach Maya as our primary package. So I, I can see a world in which the answer to that is yes, but at the moment the answer is no, or hard to tell, uh, just because there doesn't seem, we're not getting a huge amount of requests from the industry uh, to, sh to teach Blender. But that doesn't mean it can't change. When you're working on a character, what is the best time to pose it good question you have some issues with 
this part? Do I have to make UVs for the character after it is posed or before? Good question. Um, if you're the question that you're asking here is basically, you know, um, when to pose, right? And the, the answer to that is difficult to answer because it depends on what your goal is. So if you're making a character for games, you don't pose it until your character is completed. If you're making a character for VFX, VFX, it's the same kind of thing, right? If you're making a character for uh, a sculpture or a statue for concept art, you can kind of sculpt it or you can pose it whenever works for you. Uh, there's not like really a specific time that's going to be better or worse than others. Um, but if you're going to render it in something that's going to need UVs, so uh, for example, Keyshot doesn't necessarily need UVs, um, you can pose it whenever you want, right? Now, what I've been learning in my process here in the, in the characters that I've been working on for Archetype is that they are rendering them in uh, Unreal. Unreal requires UVs. So I need to pose the character uh, and make sure it's UV beforehand. So uh, a quick example that I'll just show you from one of the previous projects is this one. This is the caregiver. So you see that there's a couple different poses here. So this there's this kind of heroic standing pose. There's sort of a walking pose. There's a kneeling pose, right? There's a couple different poses here, a standing with hands out pose. Uh, what I did in this instance was I made the character in a T or A or neutral pose, uh, textured it, and then I posed it afterwards. So that's how you can do that. Good question, though. A couple questions coming, which is awesome. Keep them coming. Uh, Evan from YouTube says, Blender seems to be based to be used uh, on an individual artist basis. Yep, if artists or designers use it, they are capable of working with larger teams. Yes, exactly. They can. The, the nice thing about people using it in these types of departments is that those files can be exported to other people, right? But though they're not necessarily passing it down a pipeline. So that's something to be aware of. Uh, what are the limitations in self-learning 3D? Really good question. Uh, the limitations are really your personal drive. You know, if you are somebody who... Um, if I like this moon shape, by the way, I was trying something like that. Um, if you're somebody who really struggles to create your own curriculum, basically, to, to force yourself to do that work, uh, you're going to have a lot of trouble in, in doing it yourself, right? Because, you know, you don't get me wrong, this is no one. I think that, you know, if you're, if you want to go to a school for, for learning this stuff, in my opinion, this is where you should come. No one is the place. But um, that doesn't mean there aren't self-taught artists out there or people who can't learn. Obviously, you know, people are, are watching us on YouTube and Twitch right now. There's a lot of ways you can learn um, by self-learning on, on the Internet. There's way more, whether it's tutorial DVDs or, or workshops or anything like that. But, but it has to be self-driven. So if you're not somebody who feels like you can do that, then, then you probably need to go to school. For myself, I'm not somebody who can do that. You know, and I'll tell you, it takes a, it takes time to to get into it, to really commit yourself to it. So what I mean by that is, um, come on, here we go. I'll try to make sort of a, a different type of a collar here. I'm trying to figure out what some of these graphics could be. I might even jump back to this in a second to kind of ideate on what that shape could be if I like this shape. There's a couple things kind of going on here. Uh, but it's all about your own self-drive. You know, it, it's not going to be... If you want to work, you know, pretty heavily in a production, it's not going to be a, a two-month endeavor or a three-month endeavor, to, if you, especially if you don't know 3D. It's going to be a year, at least, of work, right? To get yourself up to speed on it, to get, get the practice in it, to really get yourself there. So do you have the commitment for yourself to work for a year, potentially, let's say, two years as a hobbyist learning on the Internet? Will you put in the time to do the work to make it good and and uh, not just do the work but when you hit the hard the hard parts of that are you going to push through it yourself that's the real question I think for people who do who do self-learning and to some people the answer is yes right they will uh, not somebody saying even a year is too little I agree with you you know the Nomen program started a minimum of, of two years 
and we are you know you're going to take hundreds of hours of classes and you're going to do hundreds of hours of homework so you know i'm saying for you're looking at a minimum of a year to do it self-learning and you're looking at probably realistically quite a bit longer to do that so uh do you have the drive that's really the question for me is do you have the drive Yeah, this is a good element. I like you calling this out, Ash. Somebody who's self-taught, it takes you some time until you learn how to have a good routine of study. Yes, that's what schools do for you, right? That's what a school is, is intended to do is it gives you a course of study. It gives you curriculum. It gives you people around you who are going to help you answer the questions. It gives you the time to work, right? We recommend at Millman people come in and work in the labs. So they're working there. They're next to other people. Right. And that gives them people who've gone through that experience before who can answer questions, also create friendships that can create support networks for you. Right. Those are all really important things, in my opinion, about going through a school. And that is the challenge of self-learning for me. It's not just can I learn it by myself? Do I have access to it, to the information? I can tell you right now you have the access to the information. It's online. You just have to search and find it. So. Hopefully that answers your question. Would you recommend picking up a tablet for learning sculpting? Uh, for initially learning, like let's say you've never done it before, uh, I don't know if you need to right away to be super, super honest with you. Uh, the reason I say that is I know people who sculpt with a mouse and the tablet can be a bit of an investment. So it might not be like the ideal jumping off point for you. Uh, but if you immediately are getting into it and you maybe you use a mouse for a little bit, use something like a blender or a ZBrush Core Mini, you know, and you're kind of enjoying it, then yeah, yeah, get a tablet. Ash is saying there's Discord groups. A lot of 3D artists will have Discord groups. That is true. That can be a really great community for you to learn. Uh, at this point, I'm kind of just playing with shape relationships and just kind of trying to understand exactly what I want from this. I'm going to push that head backwards, too. So if I'm trying to think of characters that I like that, that I might use as inspiration or as reference for this, not as, like, visuals, because they're... The characters I'm going to mention are basically naked people, but the method, like the mindset or what somebody looks like in this, is probably Silver Surfer and Dr. Manhattan, somebody who's had an intense amount of power, maybe for too long, and they kind of disassociate from like the reality of the world at a certain point. Uh, not so funny from YouTube. You're 15 and you're doing 3D. You've been doing it for two years. So you're with 13 when you started, which is amazing, by the way. You can't really start schooling now, obviously, because you're too young. And you really don't want to wait to the next years to utilize them. What would you do if I was in your position? Uh, well, first off, I just want to say the fact that you are interested in 3D and you started 3D at the age of, you know, under... 18 just in general is a huge bonus for you because you probably have a pretty decent idea as to what you want to do or maybe even what the the things are you know the different uh types of things that exist in this space uh that is a huge benefit to you so for you for somebody in that space um or in that that position in your life i think you just keep working you know you're 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 young so keep experimenting, keep trying, keep 
just keep doing things honestly uh, I think that will be really big for you uh, don't slack on your your fundamental skills learn how to draw learn how to paint learn how to sculpt um, you know, learn those types of things because even though it sounds a little weird uh, those things a hundred percent like a hundred thousand percent translate into 3d you know what I'm doing now uh, and what I do on all of this stream and what we you know what we look for in Nomen portfolios for example is people who have traditional fundamental skills and that can be anything right from painting drawing sculpting all that stuff uh, somebody's saying you know somebody started 3d last year and they're 24 i think i started 20 i think i started 3d when i was 20 20 22 right so the idea that you know, you're young means you're gonna know and you're gonna have way more access to the tools and to the stuff that you want uh way faster than i think you know the average person so what i would do for you is is if you're what you're doing right now i mean you're watching a stream you're probably learning some stuff from here do your own projects you know, do your own projects. See what's interesting to you. Um, there's no reason that you can't continue that, right? That you shouldn't continue doing that or making your own projects, learning Blender, learning any program. So keep it up, I guess, is the question. Do we need to re apologize every ZBrush model? Good question, Ashray. Uh, no. Short answer is no, you don't. Uh, it really is going to depend. Ooh, that was interesting. It's really going to depend on what your goal is. You do not need to retopologize every single ZBrush model. No, it's going to depend on what you want to do with it. Is, is it staying in ZBrush? Is it a sculpt? Is it a, you know, what exactly is the thing that we're kind of talking about, right? So don't, don't have to do it on everyone. Did you ever feel lost in your career? Like what to focus on, like character modeling or animation or et cetera? Um, not in the department or the specialization part, um, but I definitely you know, have felt lost in my career at times as far as like what I wanted to to uh, work on. Did I want to work in games? You know, uh, for me it was mostly earlier in my career where I was not entirely sure what I wanted to do. Right. So did I want to do modeling and or stuff like that? I I, I knew pretty early I wanted to be a modeler. But I didn't uh, always know. Ooh, I kind of like this, like knife edge shape. We'll run with that. That's an interesting element. Let me get some more sharp shapes in here. I think it's a little soft as I'm sketching this out. Still, again, today we're starting from scratch, so I did get lost in my career. Uh, I think questioning, you know, just stuff in general, is always going to be very normal for everybody in this, in any field. Uh, what helps for me, at least, is talking to people. Talk to peers, talk to people you respect, get their opinions, see if they've felt the same things. Probably just like you are. Sounds like you're using Maya already. That's awesome. You've already done some work with other YouTubers and smaller uh, game firms in India. That's great. So, yeah, again, my, my advice to you is probably just keep it up. You, there's, it sounds like you're doing like you've already know what you want to do and you want you just kind of need to continue it oh god that was weird so just keep keep doing what you're doing you know in three years from now when you're 18 you know just imagine how much better you're going to be what you're able to do The resources, you know, the online resources, they're not going away. They're, I think they're probably they're only going to get better. So just keep it up. I'm kind of missing something about this. Obviously, the proportions are a little jacked, and I haven't really done the arms, but let's just shrink the head a little bit for now. And I don't, like, this isn't really working. Not really the right size. It needs to be more grand. That's kind of interesting. There we go. The neck. I think the neck just. We need to put the neck in. 
even if it's just like this for now. Uh, I am turning Sculptress Pro on in case anybody's wondering. I actually really like Sculptress Pro. Uh, at first I was a little skeptical, but I'm a pretty big fan now. And this could have a little bit of an anatomy feeling to it. I think that might help getting some of that in. And maybe this will be like some piece that's worn all of this. And this can be combined into like a piece of armor or something. <laughs> uh, Emmy from Twitch is saying you're 30. You, started, you studied fine arts. You've always been in love with 3D. And last year you decided to give yourself a chance. That's great. Congrats, by the way. That's not an easy thing to do take a leap like that uh, but now you feel a little old uh, I wouldn't worry about that I'd say you know for Noman from the Noman perspective uh, a lot of the students that we have that have come to our two-year programs uh, are often slightly older so I know I know several graduates from the Noman two-year programs that have been in their 40s and 50s so you know, life is short do what you want make sure you like it right that whole mindset I think most people hope and expect to live much longer than 30. But seriously, though, it's not it's not an easy thing to do to, to make a shift in your career. I have, I've seen a couple people in the programs. I'd say every term there's somebody who's at least your age. And they always feel the same thing. But... I think it's different, like when somebody's younger, you know, like when you're 20 and you're like, oh, I'm, I'm old now. Um, you know, I'm 25, I'm so old. You know, I'm 30, I'm so old. I'm 40, I'm so old. And I, like age seems bigger when you're younger. Like a 10 year, like, you know, let's say you're, you're, somebody was saying they started when they're 30. Uh, okay, you started when you're 30. Uh, and somebody started when they're 20. Oh, wow, so much younger. They just got out of college. But, like, if you fast forward two or three decades and you, those people are still working in the, in the industry and now it's 30 years past that and somebody's 60 and somebody's 50, that doesn't seem like a big deal. You know, it's like, oh, I started learning 30 years ago. I learned 30 years ago, too. Right? I think age is kind of a perspective and, and there's sort of a, a thing of people who are younger feeling like they're missing time or they've lost time. And, and that's not really how it works. Is it hard for you to commit to a design? Sometimes, yeah. Uh, I think sometimes it can be hard for me to commit to a design. Um, what I try to do is, is work iteratively. What I mean by that is I basically try to, to work in a way in which... I'm going to make some of this anatomy stuff. I think that'll help me push this a little bit farther as we basically we'll, we'll end up creating some costume elements for the character. We'll put the costume stuff here down at the bottom. We'll make this a little bit more uh, anatomy creature for a little while. Ooh. This just made me think you could have multiple arms. Thoughts on multiple arms, chat? Four arms. Five arms. Six arms. Eight arms. Thoughts on that? Uh, as you answer that, I'll continue the, the question, which whatever that was. Is it hard for me to commit to a design? Sometimes. Um, sometimes just working and making a bold choice. You know, whether it's going to be successful or not is is a challenge. Rob says, yeah, Rob was the person that said they should be short. So I'm into that already. Good job, Rob. Spider-Man, like four arms, maybe like the man spider. The man spider was an interesting thing. Most people don't know what the man spider is anymore. That was when Peter Parker, I think it was Peter Parker sometime during the Clone Wars. I think he got... Like he was continuing to mutate and he ended up uh, doing this. <laughs> uh, he kind of evolved into the man spider. Not Peter's best time. Uh, let's see what we got. Somebody was asking a question. What is your mindset like when you start comparing yourself with people that do better than you? Oh my God, that is such a bad thing to do. It's not some not to be to be clear. I do it, and I don't like doing it. Um, but it is something where it's like it's so it's so. <laughs> I don't know what the right word is I'm, that I'm trying to get to. 
it's such a negative headspace, I think, like looking at other people's work and comparing yourself to people over and over and over, I find being so, so damaging to me. It can be really damaging. Not that saying I shouldn't look at other people's work, that's fine, but like if you get into this headspace where you're comparing yourself to other people, that's a really negative space because everybody's on their own journey, everybody has their own skills, everybody has their own challenges, right? All that stuff is unique to in each individual person. And if you just kind of come in and be like, look at this person, you know, we were talking about age, and that, are, that can obviously be a, be a big part of it. Like, look at this person, they're 20 and they're so incredible. Wow, and they're 25 and look at what they've done. You know, and I'm 30, I'm 35, I'm 40, I'm 50, whatever. You don't know, right? Your work, your life is entirely different. Or where they grew up is entirely different. It's, it's not worth doing that, in my opinion. So don't do that. If you can, if you try, don't do that. It's not helpful. It's not going to be helpful for you. It's not going to be helpful for anybody. It's going to drive you into a deep hole of depression. Ooh, Rob, you know I like dice. You must have been here before. I know I've seen your face before. You're... Leave it up to roll a dice. All right, let's get a D4 out. Or you said a D6. D6 plus two. This is a D6. This is a D6 that I had several, several, several streams ago that I actually printed. So this is a 3D clear dice that I printed. I did a couple other ones too. I did uh, this one here. This is the big, the big bull. Oh, look at that. I rolled it right on a natural 20 for y'all. All right, let's see how many dice we get, how many arms we get. That was a four. So that would be four plus two. Uh, I, I picked it up and dropped it, but we got a four. So we'll try six arms. Focus this thing. We'll try six arms. Reality, it will probably go to four arms. That was I was <laughs> thinking, but we'll give it a shot. May I ask what software does animation studios like Pixar and DreamWorks use to create their amazing characters and worlds? Yes, they probably use things like what I'm using right now, which is going to be... Uh, this is ZBrush right here. Try to get both my hands on the screen. Boom, boom, finger guns. Um, ZBrush is probably the one that's going to be used for characters, for organic modeling and sculpting like that. Things like uh, Maya will probably be a lot of what they use as well. Uh, Substance Painter for creating textures. Uh, yeah, that kind of stuff. Uh, let's see. Forearms. Somebody says forearms. We'll probably end up with forearms, and I think that's kind of what initially I'm leaning towards. All right, we don't, I don't need to be this big. Let's keep working. I'm probably going to keep moving this around. This is probably going to be the most heroic of the characters. You know, I want this to be somewhat imposing. I did talk about how this is going to be the most masculine of the forms that we're working on. I don't have my symmetry on. The caregiver was pretty heroic and masculine in some ways, but there was also a lot of fem feminine forms in those shapes as well. This is probably the only character that I would actually define as like a gender. This is probably the only he. The other ones were not. They were theys, I think. so far. I'm sure that'll change in the future. Oh, okay. I don't know what this thing is, what this jam is. Let's go uh, import an arm. Uh, rather than sculpting an arm from scratch, I'm just going to import an arm. Why? Because it's easier. It's faster, and I kind of already have an idea of what I want. Import. Let's pull this off to the side. Get to go through my files. Moving real slow, all of a sudden I just like couldn't think. Uh, let's do. Oh, it crashed. Well, let's hope it saves that. For some reason, it crashed upon. 
importing. And we didn't save. All right, we're booting up ZBrush again. It says it saved. It says it would be in my quick save file. Here it is. Sometimes ZBrush comes through with the, the win on this. Sometimes it does not. But now we need to save. Oh, I had saved a long time ago. All right, we're starting back here. Um, question about Civil War. Good question. Uh, I've seen your Spider-Man Civil War design. That, that what was the concept? Totally your own idea. If yes, how much production time was allotted by Marvel Studios to design the suit? Uh, that is not actually my design, the thing that you're talking about, uh, this Spider-Man work here. Uh, this was a design by Ryan Minerding. Um, so you can probably find his design. So that was all Ryan's work. Um, his inspirations were Alex Ross, I think was the big thing for like the face, and the style of the eyes, and how the eyes could move. Um, and I don't know, remember how long it was. Uh, we were probably given a, a month six weeks to design and, and get a model out so they could make it for Civil War. Good question, though. Thank you for asking. All right, what was I doing? I was going to add some arms. Import. As I was brain farting and couldn't figure out where to go, it crashed. So let's go back to those assets. Hands, 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 hands. No. I don't want hands, I want arms. We'll just do the whole upper body then. Oh, there you are. I wanted this one because it has kind of spindly fingers. And we're actually just gonna delete pretty much all of that. Symmetry was on, all of that. I might grow it one time and then do that again. And then I'll delete the hidden. And then we'll come in here and do this. And we'll keep the pose out for now just to have it like that. So we'll do one arm like this. Ah, perfect. What an imposing figure. Ah, yes. <laughs> oh, this always makes me laugh. 3D, 3D makes me laugh all the time because you just make such stupid looking things. Ah, these big arms. All right, let's stretch this out. And then we'll get it, one of these into a pose. How long have I worked as a sculptor for, Sheldon is asking. Uh, I have worked as a sculptor now, or at least been doing digital sculpting for... Well, I graduated professionally. I graduated in 2009 when I had my first job on like January 3rd, 2010. So that would be just over 12 years.
missing a digit. Slenderman arms, that's right. We're going to get some long arms in here. It's going to get better than this, just to be clear. <laughs> this is the weird thing about doing a stream where it's like, let's start from the beginning, is that it doesn't always look good when you start. Meaning almost never does it look good when you start. Uh, it's not rigging. I'm not rigging stuff. I'm just posing stuff. But they have some ways to make it so you kind of can, it can kind of function like a rig. Now the profile, this profile, I'm getting. I like kind of the position of these arms. This sort of, you know, this chest would be pulled back. The shoulders would be back. Uh, you know, all that fun stuff. A couple questions coming in. Let me go from back from the top. For someone who wants to make live action and animated movies, what would be the best route to take when it comes to taking courses? Should I take filmmaking classes or animation VFX classes? Uh, what do you want to do in those positions is the question I would ask you, Drawn Skull. Um, if you want to be somebody who's like the director, filmmaking classes are more traditional for being uh, that. But if you want to be somebody who's going to come up through the asset side or the animation side or the lighting side or the compositing side, that would all be uh, the other type. How many pieces did I have on my first show reel? Uh, I never actually created my final reel because I had a job before I would need it. Um, but I probably had about... How many did I have? Four? Probably four. Four pieces. Let's see, another question. How'd you get started in 3D modeling? What uh, what led you to decide 3D modeling over anything else? Sheldon is asking. Um, I, got in, I went to a school before I went to Noman, I, in case people are joining or don't know much about me or anything. Uh, I went to a school before Nomen, uh, which was a bad school. Uh, I don't say that in like a objective way. I mean, if you know anything about education in the American system, uh, the the show was act the the school was shut down by the government because it was a predatory for profit school. It was a bad school, um, and I went to one of those, and it taught me a lot about what I didn't didn't want. Uh, to do and what I shouldn't do, but one of the things that I, one of the first things that they taught there, and probably one of the realistically only things that they taught that was decent, was uh, basics of and getting into 3D modeling, because it's you know one of the earliest parts in the pipeline, and so um, that was where I learned about 3D modeling, and I really enjoyed it. I got into it; it was fun. Uh, that's kind of what I liked about it the most was that, was that it was just kind of fun, and. Um, I stuck with it. From then on, I stuck with it. That's basically, that's that's the origin story. Six arms feels like it's too much. I know we rolled a d6 and we got this, we got it, but I feel like we should have rolled a d4. Because then it's just a little too much. I feel like four is going to be fine. Gonna be some kind of John Cartery. We're obviously gonna have to adjust stuff to fix this. But we got about just over, just under, excuse me, an hour in the stream. And again, this is our block out for the day. This is us figuring out what the character is for the very, very first time. So we got time. Yeah. All right. People were asking about. Let's get some legs in here. Let me go ahead and just grab some legs. And as I do that, I'm going to save. Somebody was asking about the rigging or the new feature of the transpose. There's a couple questions. One from YouTube was asking that. And another one was this one. I'll show you that real quick. So let's go back to the arms. Um, yeah, we'll just use the arm. So there's two ways to bend things in ZBrush. First, 
We'll just isolate one of these, we'll just say, so I can work on one at a time. If I have something masked, right, so let's say I want to bend this arm, I'll mask it, I'll invert the mask, and then I can grab it and put this transpose line, just like a bone, in the, in the, the wrist here in the arm. Do it again, because I misclicked. And then you can grab the handles and you can move them, right? This is, this is option A. And you can move like this. It works. Now, then now what if I wanted to move the wrist, what I would need to do is then mask off this, redraw the line, and bend it the wrist, right? This again is option A. Option B, or a hidden feature, is holding down Alt. Tie. Ty says make six arms. All right, maybe we'll do six arms. Let me think about it. Uh, the option B is instead of masking it like this and drawing it every time, right? What you can do is you can move it, but you can also now hold down Alt in the area that is not masked. So this is not masked. I'm holding out Alt. And you see what it's actually doing is it's not just rotating it, but it's also grabbing the geometry and it's twisting it. What it's intending to do here is it's kind of intending you can do it without any masking too it's a quick one but it's creating squash and stretch squash and stretch compression that's the words i was trying to say so that it simulates more like anatomy does so i don't need to have anything all you need to do is you just need to go over here and just hold down alt and you can move it the downside of this i'll tell you right now some people are going to be like that's fucking awesome forever uh you can compress things and you can squash things and you can move things that you probably didn't want to do so just be aware that you might not always like the result of what you picked when you do that it's a little creepy finger in there signature move the creepy finger good questions what are the pr common problems? Good question from Sheldon. What are the common problems a 3D sculptor might have while searching for jobs? I'll leave that one up. Uh, what are common problems that 3D sculptors might have while searching for jobs? Uh, I think the first thing is, is if you just want to be a 3D sculptor. Uh, there is a lot of asset work out there, meaning you know there's a lot of people, a lot of positions to make assets, make cool things. Um, but you, you probably need to know, or you should know, a little bit more about the pipeline, about how to texture, about how to UV, about how to just generally how to bring things down the pipe rather than it just being, um, you know, one thing. That's probably the biggest hurdle that I would imagine most people get into when it comes to um, you know, being a 3D sculptor and wanting to get a job because there's just going to be more work for people who can do more than just work in ZBrush. So that's the biggest thing. So how can you expand upon that? Well, you know, learning a little bit about high poly or low poly workflows, right? I think that's gonna be an important part of that. I don't need these other set of hands here, but per recommendations, we'll try. I think this would be too weird. Too weird and creepy. I can't do it. I can't do that one. I can't do that one. It's just too odd. We're going with this. I'm feeling good about this. So, yeah, that's the biggest thing I'd say is expand your workflow. Expand what you know. Um, there's a lot of good sculptors out there now. You know, I think there's a lot of good people who can sculpt. But if you can do beyond just sculpting, or maybe you can prep and you can do 3D printing and you you know, you have other areas of your uh, skill set that are not on display, you know, show those. Yeah, this is starting to get there. Now we got those extra arms. It's kind of more graphic-y thing over here. This is going to be okay. We do need to make legs. So let's make some quickie legs. Now, before we ask, I think it's going to be two legs. I think we're going very John Cartery here. I actually liked the John Carter movie. I know it was like considered like a critical flop or whatever, but I liked it. 
I don't watch it all the time, but I did like it. Lower body, no toes. There we go, we're done. Let's just like stretch the legs. Let's make them let's make them kind of match body. I think the legs are gonna have to be kind of long. I do like I was saying. I, it's almost the Superman pose. This is the one that I've, as I've been drawing, I'm like, this is kind of interesting. Now, obviously, they could have, like, another set of arms, and they could be, like, doing something with those arms. But I like that idea for, like, a final, or one of the final poses. That means I could probably just pose it. I could sculpt the legs together. Which is always really fun, actually. meaning let's just do it you can kind of see just like immediately the gesture even though they're long thin legs like just putting them together and then even we'll use that same technique I was just showing we'll point like the toes down stretch that out Get a little inflate in here. I'll probably end up having to sculpt one leg at a time. Okay, that's too big. We need to figure out what this... Uh... Ooh, this is a jam. How much time do you think what will take? Uh, go ahead and ask that question again, Faulty. What are you What are you asking about what you know time will take? Happy to answer. I'm just not sure what you're specifically asking. Are you sp Are you asking like how long this character will take to make? How many times have you had to relocate to accept a job? Um, I relocated once. I worked in. I moved away to go work remotely for a while uh, and so I'm, I moved back to accept a job but not ever before that should these be longer or do you think they're fine Ugh. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I think this is fine for now this pose is going to work just fine What render engine is the most popular in the animation industry? How many have you worked with? Uh, I've never actually worked in post, which is interesting. I think most people expect that I have, uh, but I've never worked in post. Uh, so render engines that I have worked in have been game engines, one of which was a proprietary engine by Naughty Dog. Uh, and then one was Lumberyard and CryEngine before that. But the most common one, uh, it's kind of evolves over time. Um, I actually don't know what the most common ones are right now. This is a good question. Let's do some research for myself on that. Let's turn that black again. Maybe I'm going to get some more. I said I wanted to be more spiky. So let's like even just explore like what some silhouettes could look like. Meaning just adding that little bit of overlap there changes the way that you kind of perceive it. And I don't think it's a massive change. I think it's just figuring out, you know, justifying why these shapes are going to exist. So again, this is going to be probably the most aggressive of all of them. I just like the idea of like turning his head down. Bring his head forward. All 
right, we need some horns or something from an anatomical standpoint that we're going to add to the, the head of the character here. Um, we have these elements that are some sort of costume elements, so we'll end up having these. This is kind of where the direction we're going to head towards. I'm actually pretty happy with this so far, which, to be honest with you, is a huge relief because I didn't... I really struggled with the last project. I'll be honest. I, I, maybe that's part of the appeal of this stream, but, like, the last project was really difficult for me. I really never got in flow on it. So coming into a, a new project like now and being like, yeah, yeah, this is working uh, already at least. Or just, I see where it can go. Feels good. Feels good, man. Do people still say that? Do people still say feels good, man. Oh, there's like a weird Pope vibe going on. Do a goat round horn. Maybe it'll look cooler. This is like a very popey look. Do I like that? Not really. I mean, kind of. I like the idea of that. It's definitely like a, a powerful icon. Maybe a little too KKK for me, though. Let's get away from that. Let's delete that. And let's say there was a somebody who suggested a horn. Let's get a cone. Or a spiral. They have the uh, primitives over here you can play with. I'm going to go to the initialize setting. And we're going to adjust this. So the coverage is how many times it spins. Try a goat horn. Sheldon's asking, as a 3D modeler, do you need to have multiple income streams to live comfortably? Uh, if so, what would you recommend? Uh, I have never had to do that, so I don't. I don't think so. Displacement is how far away from the center it is. It's way too much coverage. I don't want like a full goat horn. Like I don't want like a Princess Leia bun vibe, but we can try this. Getting a beetle vibe. Ooh, Ty. Now you're talking. Rhino beetle. Yeah, let's try some horns here in a second. Ty, you're killing it today. Once you get metric and get this in there. Let's look at some beetle horns. Ooh, a little twi a little twist in there. I like a little twist. I don't know why I'm saying it like that, but it felt it felt like what I should say. Ooh, okay. Maybe we'll use this for something. When you're done with it, you just hit uh, poly mesh make 3D. Yeah, I see the bite. You know what? It's this thing. I think this is the beetle. The beetle like pincer, right? Yeah, I see what you're talking about. Uh, all right, let's append that horn. Where are you? How large are you? Well, at least it's not like some massive thing that's in the nether realms. I mean, this is kind of cool, though. Very like. I might accidentally put it here. We'll mirror this over and we'll try this. And then we'll try another one. A couple other ones. Uh, let's just do... Mirror... Yeah, no, we'll do this with the plugin. Plugin, subtool master, mirror, merge into one tool. This is like very classic, exactly what I think I was expecting to make. Doesn't mean it's exactly what I want to make. 
silhouettes. Obviously, the, the silhouettes are really heavily competing there, so there need to be some adjustments. Kind of like the Texas Longhorn look. And then it's not competing. And it's like actually adding to it. It does kind of feel like this needs to go down in the back, huh? That way you can see through there. I think that'd be more menacing rather than it just being a big old collar. This thing goes away a little too. All right, that's one option one. We got a horn. Yeah, that's awesome. Now he can't turn his head to the side. Right, exactly. Design is never supposed to be about functionality. I guess we could also just do this. Yeah, let's make another horn. Uh, let's and let's look up some reference based on a suggestion. Beetle horns. I mean, we could do something like this, like a rhino beetle. That's what your suggestion was, Ty. We could do Hercules beetle, which I think is this one. That's a rhino beetle. This is also kind of uh, the artist I was talking about before. Um, Martin Verhoeven uses a lot of that stuff. Have you ever plateaued? And if so, how do you get past it? Uh, I don't know if I've ever plateaued. I'm not, I, I just don't know. Um, I've definitely felt moments where I've been stagnant in my career. Like artistically. And how I get past this is cool. I like this. Five-horned rhino beetle. Let's just take that. This, this feels like appropriate to me. Beetle Hercules. And these are cool shapes, obviously. I could take some of these shapes. In his face. I definitely probably should put some stuff on his face. Uh, but as far as stagnating, um, trying new things, getting into new software, trying to make new projects, you know, making new things that are that are cool to you, that are exciting to you, uh, but trying um, new techniques, trying things that are different, exploring, uh, allowing yourself to fail, I think is probably one of the biggest parts of that. Because if you don't allow yourself to fail, then how are you going to ever learn or try something new? So be okay with that. I guess that's the thing that I would say. Don't expect that you'll learn something overnight. I know many people who feel like that they, they should or they, you know, pick things up and, or they want to pick something up and it just doesn't go as fast as they wanted. That's so normal, it's insane. You, know, you don't become a master overnight. All right, let's uh, turn our symmetry on. Let's get our, there it is. I'm gonna place these probably not where they need to go. And I guess the question is, I've had this like ornamental armor on. Let's hide that for a minute. We have a couple that we're going to come up this way. Let's let's legit pull a couple spikes out of here. Okay. Uh, let's pull some out of here. Whoop. Let's get a big one at the top. Not as spiky as I wanted, but we'll, you know, we'll change that. Do like the Texas Longhorn look. This is very like 
Witch King. How many hours a day, day do you spend sculpting? Uh, I wish I did more. Uh, right now, it's not as much as I used to. Uh, but I used to spend, you know, at least eight. I think changing up the silhouette a little bit to make it more organic is going to help me quite a bit. Let's get some of this stuff. Getting some of this. Again, this is going to be our most aggressive character. Or almost certainly. Nine small eyes. Sounds good. I haven't figured out what we'll do for the eyes. Right now, I feel like we're just in the middle of making a Dark Souls or Elden Ring boss. Which, to be honest, that's fine. This ends up looking like a Elden Ring boss. That's still a success. There's something about this shape which is like really stupid, but I also really like it. Uh, I don't know what it is. It's like it should it should be more than I think what it is. I think it has to be like rolled into a crown or something. You know, as we get into this stuff, we can, you know, start doing similar elements. This is where, this is where Sculptures Pro, for people who don't use Sculptures Pro, it's a feature you can use. It's right up here, this little you know, sort of squiggly thing in the sphere. Uh, you can have a mesh, which has no subdivisions, and then much like DynaMesh, but you can just pull elements out of it, and it will create new geometry for you so you can create these really weird technically things out of nowhere which is actually kind of cool looking but we'll do a lot more of those we'll actually design them so they look more interesting it's a nice way to to work once you have a base shape can you make glow the dark red ball in his head I was actually thinking about something glowing, but I already did glow in the dark on another element of another character. But yeah, you could totally do that. Uh, that's kind of similar to what I did on this one, actually, which you're kind of asking. Not you. You. So this character has glowing uh, eyeballs that float inside their head. So yes, you can do that. How are you feeling about these longhorns? Are they too much? This is pretty strong graphically. I mean, obviously, I can come in and tweak them. I guess the question is like, should they be there at all? Oh, what is this? What is this? What is this? Sometimes I just like finding new shapes. I can even pull some of these shapes in. Feels too symmetrical. It's all pretty symmetrical, though. Like, is it better to have like this, where it's kind of like, you know, this is clearly the head, and we're encircling the head, and there's like some spiky elements here, or is it better to go like this? 
it's still definitely. Also, we need to remember that this is like, for lack of a better term, the king of this world. So which one is more king-like? Let's go from other angles too. So we can do like this. Here, we'll just do a quick, quick silhouette turnaround. This one. Hmm. We'll say right. Options for right. Options for left. I think I like the big horn too. I think we're gonna we're gonna do both. We just gotta figure out how to make it work now. Yeah, they're backwards. I didn't mean to make them backwards, but I kind of like that. I think we can roll that in with this other beetle horn stuff. I don't think it's really that far out of the idea. And maybe some of these like hard planes that are coming in with this. They have these cute little teeth. Yeah, we're gonna obliterate those. I think there's something in here. I think this is the direction. It's getting a little busy, but that's okay. And now he can turn his head more. Whoever said he couldn't, fixed it. Right, this is a piece that would be worn. This could actually probably become part of the body. I'm using some of that reference I was talking about with Martin's work. A lot of his work is like it feels like it could be a costume, but it's not a costume. I think that's really cool. Like it's actually part of the character. Silhouette-wise, though, is that better or is that better? I kind of just like the head jutting out. I feel like this collar that I added on here is interesting, but from a again, going back to silhouette standpoint, I kind of like like I like seeing the head more than I do it being kind of in in this thing. It's simpler. But I don't think that's bad. Maybe I just need to minimize this. Sage of six path. I'll just put, tuck it in a little bit. Because it's nice, but I think it just needs to be like hidden just a little bit. I like all the little details it's adding. I like all the little extras. Just needs a little bit. What's the most time you've spent creating a sculpt? Uh, probably one sculpt. I don't know. That's a good question. Probably a, one model. Probably three months, four months. That's my guess. All right. Is it officially going to all be his anatomy now? So now we can get in to destroy it. Show us your best sculpt. Uh, well, it's not specifically a sculpt, but I guess if I had to show you my uh, model that I spent the most time on, uh, it's probably this. I think. Um, all right, let's get into a little bit more detail work now. So we've got some of these horns, which I'm actually liking. I'm going to have to figure out the lighting for this one. This is going to be a fun one to light, I think. And like what some of these materials are, they, you know. None of it. What's up, sir? Hope you're doing well. How long did they give me to work on Iron Man? Uh, I think each one was... That one was a little longer. There were some differences there, but on average, I'd say it was about uh, four to eight weeks. Four to eight weeks. That Gray Fox model is amazing. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Cool tips on making the horns. No problem.
we gotta just start exploring, huh? And we have, we have that on, which is great. I kind of want to just merge a couple of these. Like, I want to merge this um, and probably this together. You know, I like some of these big overlaps that are being created. This is very buggy. Huh? That's okay. I don't know if I've ever made something using these references. I've seen a lot of stuff being made from these kind of things. I don't think if I've ever made or used it on a project, which is kind of fun. Get into a you know a piece of reference that you've seen used or that you like a lot and, and never really do it. I do like the idea of there being a hollow element to the character, something that would glow from inside. Was the Iron Man model that you that you made used in the live action movie? Uh, it was not specifically my model, but my model was then handed off to the visual effects teams and toy teams and all that to use as a model to uh, as their reference point. So they probably retopologized parts of it. They may have modeled it entirely again from scratch. I don't know. But it was given to them so that it would be used or at least is intended to be used for those teams as a starting point or a reference point. I have a question for somebody in the chat, actually. None of it. You do a lot of this work where you have a lot of texture and interesting things. Are there any special brushes you use? Like, is, that's such a stupid question. I realize saying that now, but like, I know some people, like a, somebody uses the concrete brush, which I thought was really interesting. I think it was Jared Morantz uses the, it was like soft concrete or something was a brush that he really liked. I thought that was really interesting because it created some textures. So I'm wondering if you have any Anything that you use, or if anybody in the chat has textures or brushes that they like to use that add texture while sculpting. Obviously, the clay buildup is great. The clay tubes is great. Those are all fantastic. But I'm looking for just like a different brush that will give me form. but with texture in it. I think the concrete brush is gone. Is it called soft? Oh, never mind. It's called soft concrete. I think it's this brush. This is a brush that I've seen uh, Jared Morantz use quite a bit. Because as you can see, you can still create form with it, uh, but it also adds like a nice, really nice texture to it. And you can probably just change this texture. It's kind of the same texture. Still kind of the same texture. There we go. Let's pick another brush and go back to it. I think I, yeah, I ruined it. I ruined the brush. like even just a quick couple quick strokes with a brush like this you can get some really cool lines and some cool patterns and I'm using um, whatever it's called sub Sculptor's pro sculptures pro Thank you, Rob. Chat's coming through today. Thank you all for being here. We super appreciate it. We have about 15 minutes left in the stream. So if anybody has questions or you got, you know, things you want answered or, or techniques or questions about things I'm working on or whatever, feel free to ask them. I'll do my best to answer before we leave.
Oh, I tried the XMD toolbox. Lots of crazy brushes in there. I have not. I have not tried it. I've been experimenting with more brushes. I was never really a person who played around with too many of the brushes. And now I'm kind of like, you know, exploring with some of them. Which has actually been pretty fun to do because now I'm kind of getting into the whole, you know, different types of things that I've never done before. Usually I would just use, I would sculpt everything by hand with like, you know, the clay build-up brush or the damn standard brush. So. Don't like this shape that I made. I often do this like figure 80 shape, which I want to avoid. And I'm just continuing to just keep doing over and over and over. Let's try to get some flow in. Let's like go this way. Play around with the idea that maybe this is a sternum. Do I sculpt in VR? Uh, yeah, sometimes. You know, I mean, I've, I use Gravity Sketch. I've never used Adobe Medium. It's something I'm interested in for sure. I just can't be in a VR headset for that long. Speaking of, somebody says, you know, <laughs> how are you able to sit for eight hours long? Uh, take breaks. Get up. Don't. The answer is don't sit for eight hours long. Uh, you know, get up and take a break for for a little while and walk around and go get some food or see somebody. Or I think that's probably more important in a lot of ways. Ooh, that was a lucky stroke. Yeah, just don't. Even though you work for eight hours a day or you want to work for eight hours a day, uh, it's not going to be healthy to do it for that long, especially not over extended periods of time. So I would recommend getting up. Uh, if you're working in a studio, go see what the other people at the studio do. Go learn about what somebody else at your job does. Slash 2 for fur blocking shapes. Slash 2 is good. Slash 2, the Slash series of brushes is pretty underrated. scaly pattern, but I'm interested in what it's creating. a graphics tab with a built-in screen. You're talking like a Cintiq or something equivalent to that. Uh, I just don't really... There's, I'll tell you the, the, there's two reasons. Uh, one, and they're they're both uh, 
first world problems, and but they're also because uh, I think I've used, I've worked without a tablet for long enough that I don't really feel like I need one anymore. Uh, I remember being younger in my career and being like, I gotta have one. They're the, you get, you know, everybody uses one. They don't, by the way. Not everybody uses one. Um, the first is I've gotten so used to working um, on a tablet that now I don't want to put my hand in the way. I don't like my hand being in the way when I'm working of the artwork. It is kind of annoying now. It's no longer like a feature of being able to draw directly on the screen. It's like, why is my hand in the way? Uh, and second is they get warm. They get hot. And you'll, my, I, I've had like, especially if you're working in areas where it's like a little warm, right? Uh, just like working on it, it's like across the surface and it's just like, eek, like, and it kind of, you feel that, that weird stickiness to it. Um, so that's, that's probably a big part of the reason. I just don't like that feeling. Um, with that though, uh, I, they're, they're also so expensive. They're so expensive. And the color profiles, the colors for a long time have not been as good. So, you know, I'd have to be checking my work on another monitor anyways, most of the time, which is fine. Obviously I'll check my work on another monitor. I do that anyways. Mostly I check it on phones now, phones and tablets. Um, but it's just not, it's not needed for me. I just don't, I just don't need it. Are there any known workshop tutorials that you recommend or that I've taken? I've made a couple. Plug, plug, plug. Um, ones that I really liked. Depends on what you want to learn. I mean, that's the hard thing. I watch anything on character design. The more the more recent stuff with uh, Ian McKaig is incredible. So I'll watch anything on that. eyes like eyeballs probably something I don't want it to just be like a helmeted figure so we're gonna have to get into that a little bit I guess do I watch anime I don't actually watch that much anime uh, I've been looking to get into it more, though. So if anybody has a great list of suggestions, you can send them to me on Instagram. And I'll happily add them to the list of other things that I want to watch. but doesn't really have one. Is that a face? I don't know. That's what they'd say. Have I seen Arcane? Of course, yes, Arcane is great. Do I freelance for Marvel Studios? No, not for a while. I worked in house for Marvel for about five years. And I've done some freelance with them since, but not for a while. I'm going to work on this area here. It's not really working. It's kind of working. I'll continue pushing it, but it's 
not really finding its way just yet. I think a lot of it is this ab area. I don't really know what I'm doing there. Like, is it going to a tight area? Is it... What am I doing here? I'll figure that out in time, though. The hands and legs are not textured yet faulty. Uh, that is because we started this literally two hours ago. I do like the general pose of the legs, though. The pose and proportions of the legs. I think it's working with the hands. I think that you know, for the, the quick sketch that we got into today, I mean, again, we started with this today on screen. Stream. Did a quick uh, symmetrical sketch. Did uh, a couple sketches of potential, maybe an implement instrument. Well, that could be interesting. Let's try that real quick. We could still do the instrument. Let's just import, let's just append it. A, cylinder, sphere in there, no cylinder. This way, make it a little thinner. Like this, and then we'll just take this piece for a second. Maybe this piece. We'll duplicate it, turn off that symmetry, pop it over here. Duplicate this, turn off that symmetry, pop it over here. It's more just going to be representational than it is of anything that's actually going to look like that. But we might get a nice idea or starting point for this thing. Uh, yeah, it's like a staff. So, you know, we could do uh, just a quick, quick, quick pose. I'm going to save, but we're we're at time now. So just to give, have a final resolution after we save this, we'll mask this, and we'll just say, like, maybe the hand's out this way. Okay. Not symmetrically. Thank you.
Something's kind of like this. This is probably where we're going to continue going. Um, yeah, I don't know if I love that staff, but I like the idea of having a staff. And I like that it's mimicking the shapes that are inside of it. So we're going to continue with this. And that's probably, you know, much like I was putting here. Like, even if we came in here, whoop, we'll just say, you know, he's got a little uh, extra arm down here. And he's uh, holding, holding another staff thing that's got some things that are sticking out of there. I don't know. We'll figure that out later. Looks like Dr. Strange with that extra thing. Hands. Those are hands. These are all hands. How about a tome? A tome's a good idea, too. Maybe a little too far as in the, the wizardy direction. But it is a magician, so, you know, maybe not a bad idea, young seed. All right, y'all. Well, thank you all very much for being here, for hanging out with me on the stream today, for starting a new character. Uh, again, this is a character we'll be continuing on for the, at least the next three weeks. So this week, at least three more of these streams, uh, depending on how the speed of this project goes. Uh, the history of these so far has been five weeks, but I'm going to have to speed up on some of them. And this is going to be a relatively simpler one just because of the... I'm not adding... To, it's it's a relatively simple sculpt and I think I'm going in a good direction which is awesome so uh, yeah that's going to be it for today everybody thank you all super super much for being here uh, if you got any questions feel free to hit us up on Instagram if you'll hit it feel free to hit us up on any other social media platforms and uh, if you like what you're watching here we have a, a ton of other shows so if you like creatures we have a creature show if you want to watch a short be made in unreal you can watch that on Fridays we have events uh, every so often on Thursdays, we have some uh, artist journey events and conversation and interviews that we have on Fridays. Last Friday, we had Raf Grissetti and Della Longfish on the stream, so you can go listen to them um, talk about their journeys, about getting into the industry. Tons of cool stuff. So go check all that stuff out. And uh, otherwise, I will see you all next week. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one. See you soon.